Welcome to our next lecture in the series on condensed matter theory. In this video, I want to talk about surface states. When we normally talk about the properties of the materials and crystals that we investigate, we look at infinitely extended crystals. Well, in reality, of course, a crystal is of finite size, albeit very large, if you have 10 to the 23 atoms roughly per cubic centimeter. Um, but nonetheless, close to the surface, the material properties will be different. Now, the reason that we can neglect the surface for most of our bulk properties is that the volume of the states close to the surface is for a cubic crystal given by L squared times the distance where the surface influences the material properties, which is epsilon L. The bulk, on the other hand, has a volume of L cubed. And when L is large, there is a neglectable influence of your surface on the bulk properties. Now there is one thing that makes a surface very important, and that is when we do a measurement, when we look at a crystal, then you will always look at the crystal through the surface. So for properties that um, have a small penetration depth, you will actually measure the surface properties instead of the bulk properties. So it makes sense to have a look at the surface properties of a crystal and see how they are different from the bulk properties. That of course raises the questions how to treat a surface. For a bulk crystal, we can use a Fourier transform to go from real space to momentum space or crystal momentum space. And in crystal momentum space, the Hamiltonian becomes block diagonal. States with different crystal momentum don't interact with each other. And that helps us to solve the Hamiltonian. Now, if we want to treat a surface, we can look at a semi-infinite crystal where we, for the x, and the y direction take infinite crystals. Which also means that for the x and the y direction, we can use the crystal momentum. And we make a semi-infinite crystal in the z direction. So we have our coordinates x, y, z. And then if we look at the atoms, they to plus and minus infinite in the z direction, but only from zero to minus infinite in this drawing in the z direction. So x, y, infinite, z, semi-infinite. And this is a real space picture. If we look in momentum space, Then we can first of all look at the bulk Brillouin zone. And just for simplicity, we take a cubic lattice. Of course, you can use any other parallel pipe. So we have our crystal momentum, kx, ky, and kz. And within that, we have our Brillouin zone. where we have our special points, gamma, zero, zero, zero. And then we have the x point, which is given by pi over a, zero, zero, and zero pi over a, zero, or zero, zero pi over a. The m point, which sits at pi over a, pi over a zero, 
And then last but not least, the R point at the corner. At pi over A, pi over A, pi over A. Now that is for a crystal that is periodic in all three directions. When we have a semi-infinite crystal in the z-direction, then crystal momentum in the z-direction is not a good quantum number anymore. And with good, I mean basically a conserved quantum number. Uh, the Hamiltonian is not block diagonal in kz, but we still have the momentum in the x and the y direction. We can now make a projection of our three-dimensional brilliant zone on the x and the y direction, whose are still good crystal momenta, and then we get a two-dimensional brilliant zone where we now label our points with a bar on top to indicate that these are the surface crystal momenta. X bar, gamma bar, and M bar. Where gamma bar is zero, zero, and we now only have two directions. X bar is pi over A zero, and M bar is pi over A pi over A. Now, if you want to know what the eigenenergies are for states at the surface, then we can have a look at the states in a semi-infinite crystal. And for each kx and ky, we will find that we have a hopping in the z direction. And therefore these are um, basically one dimensional change for each kx and ky direction, such that the eigenenergies at the surface are the same as in the bulk. unless bound states are formed. So we find the same eigenstates, but we might find a few additional bound states. So the first thing that one can do in order to understand what the eigenenergies are that you have at the surface is to look at what we call surface projected bands. We have kx and ky as a good quantum number, and in terms of the z direction, we have to sum over all possible momenta in the z direction, which is for a bulk um, densities of, of a bulk band structure just the densities of states or the local Green's function. So if we look at 1 over pi, the imaginary part of the Green's function of the periodic lattice, where we create and annihilate a particle with crystal momentum kx and ky, but in real space in the z direction, we will find the total states that we have for each kx and ky direction at the surface. And we measure this, calculate this, of an infinite crystal. If we look back at our crystal and we would measure the topmost layer in our system, and we neglect that due to the lack of periodicity, the uh, system might change, then we would exactly measure for each kx and ky value this Green's function in terms of the band structure or densities of states. Now, it might happen that additional states form, and also the spectral weight that you find at each kx and ky point, so your total densities of states, is different at the surface or in the center of a bulk crystal. So
So we can also look at the service paths. of a semi-infinite crystal. In the former case, we could calculate of an infinite crystal have periodicity in all three directions, but we look locally in Z. In this case, we have to look at a semi-infinite crystal where we do not have periodicity in the Z direction, and we look at the Green's function in momentum space in the x and the y direction and at z equals zero in the z direction. So we look at creating or annihilating a particle at the top layer of a semi-infinite crystal. Now the energies where we find poles will be the same for the bulk crystals. We might find additional poles, additional bound states if we have a surface and we truly calculate the states of the surface, the spectral weight, so your residues, the densities of states that you have in the z direction will be different between the two cases. But whenever this one is zero, that one is definitely zero. Now for all kx and ky, we have actually a semi-infinite chain. We have a system in the z direction where you can hop from the top to the bottom. And we discussed the Green's functions of semi-infinite chains before, and you'll find somewhere here a link to the video where we discussed this for a truly one-dimensional system and now, of course, we don't have a one-dimensional system, but we have for each kx and ky a one-dimensional system. Now we know that if we look at the surface screens function and do not look at the states at the surface but deep deep down into our system that the limit of z to infinite of kx kyz kx kyz of omega must become equal to the greens function of the bulk system. And in the next videos, um, I will show you uh, with the help of a few examples, how we evolve from the surface to the bulk. And we will show that you'll get uh, Friedel oscillations close to the surface that you can also observe experimentally. Um, we will discuss additional bound states that you get, um, the possibility to get bound states due to additional surface potentials, which is always possible, but also the option to get additional bound states without additional surface potentials. Um, and we'll show that in an example of an SP band on a cubic lattice. Whereas when we have a single S-band, you will need an additional surface potential to make bound states. Now, once we discuss um, surface bound states, we can actually do a very nice example. Because normally we will always assume in physics that all our observables are smoothly varying as a function of external parameters. We have analytical functions that we observe. So if you think of a particle moving on the surface, then its mass or its velocity um, as a function of momenta will smoothly change as a function where you are in kx and ky. For surface bound states, um, that is actually not true anymore. 
and we will show that we get um, non-analytical Green's functions for these particles that can live on top of the surface. Um, but that will come with non-analytical self-energies. That will come in one of the following videos uh, that we discuss on surface states. For now, I hope to have given you a general overview of how we treat and can think about these. And with the help of several examples, I will um, make it much clearer how actually we treat these kind of systems and can describe surface states in real materials. Thank you for your attention. Stay healthy. We see each other later.